I was saying that the word sex appeal is slightly an understatement in your case. Oh my god. When do you feel you so the much. most sexy? Not when I'm sitting next to you. Oh, well. <laughs> when do you feel the most sexy? The most sexy? Um, certainly not after a 12 hour flight. <laughs> like now, for example. Uh, and certainly not at four in the morning when I'm in my recording studio. Um, you know, surrounded by, by musicians and engineers. Actually, they can they can actually testify about this because uh, at four in the morning, it's you know, it's only Nobody my leftovers, sexy. whatever is left <laughs> of me. <laughs> so probably when you're on stage, then you feel sexy. Yeah, when I dance. Yeah, when I when I interpret my own music. Um, Okay. Yes. That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. We um uh, we haven't heard for you in a while. It's been four years since the release of uh, Laundry Service. Right. Now you're back with two albums. Yeah. Um, what have you been doing in between? I know a lot of people might think that I have been all this time scratching my belly, but <laughs> no, it's not true. I've been actually working hard every day. Uh, I've actually spent a lot of time in the recording studio. You know, uh, if most of most of the days like 12 hours you know uh, every day uh it's been it's been a non-stop process you know since since the day that my um tour of the mongoose finished yeah. i immediately right after started putting together the life and of the record dvd and as soon as that finished i started you know creating my first songs and putting together demos and producing these two albums that I've uh, came up with. Exactly. Oral Fixation Volume 2 and Oral Fixation Why did you um, decide to make two albums, and a Spanish one and an English one, and not a mixture of both? Uh, well, it wasn't planned that way. It wasn't premeditated. It just happened. You know, one day I found myself with 60 songs that I had written uh, over the period of almost a year, and then um, I put myself in the difficult task of selecting my favorite ones, which mm -hmm. ended up being 20. Some of them were in Spanish, some of them in English, and that's how I, um, I came up with this idea of a double project. Okay. And I wanted to release the Spanish album first because I thought it was the right thing. I wanted my non-Hispanic fans also to understand that I've been singing for 14 years in Spanish. So it's a very important part of my artistic sensibility as well. And you know, the things that you get, to, you get to see in English are very different than the things that you get to see in Spanish. So my ways of expression vary, you know, mm. depending on the language. Because every language has its own resources, you know. Do you think that a lot of people um, are going to wait, like the, the, the people that don't speak Spanish, for the English album? A lot of no, people? actually what's been so... Uh, uh, pleasant to hear lately and so surprising for me is that you know non-hispanic countries are embracing this album and it's also something that is not very usual you know that a spanish album can you know penetrate in markets where mm -hmm. spanish is not the main language so it is unbelievable and i'm so happy you know okay. actually today i received some of, some of the good news and um, how the album is is you know people are receiving it and how the song is on the radio and all of that. I cannot, I cannot believe it. <laughs> you have to, you have it's to go like that. You have to wait. Yeah, we wake me up from this dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's unbelievable. How would you um, describe your own image? Hmm, you know, I don't think that much about that. Um, my image. Yeah, because one thing is what you think about yourself, and the other thing is what people think about you. Well, how do you like, think that people see you? Well, it depends on uh, the level of uh, depth that my relationship has with mm -hmm. people, you know. Some, like the fans. Yeah, well, for example, my fans, I think the people who have really bought my albums or have listened to my music, of, who, who, have relate, who are related to my work, you know, deeply, they understand who I am, where I come from, where I'm going to, um, what I write about in my songs, what kind of person... I am, you know, the sensibility, the things that move me, the things that motivate me in life. They know me really well. Some people who probably have never heard my music, you know, uh, in, to, to the detail, yeah. you know, of listening to the lyrics, and they probably don't understand me really well, but they've seen me shaking my hips on stage, yeah. and they think that that's all I'm about. And yeah, I shake my hips on stage. Sometimes I don't want to even shake them. <laughs> you know, right now, for example, I'm refusing to shake my hips. So now I'm going like this. The belly thing. Just, no, the, the chest thing. The chest and thing. That's a, that's a new thing. 
You see, that's quite interesting because <laughs> I had Rob Thomas in the show the other day. Yes. And um, I was saying that I, I had an interview with you and he's like, oh, you know what you have to ask her? I want to know if she has fewer bones in her body than other people do. <laughs> <laughs> he, was, he was, yeah, he was wondering about that. Oh, thank you, Rob. <laughs> it's, no, I have the same amount of bones <laughs> in see, my body. In Holland, the, the women are a bit Unless more Unless my mother stiff. Uh, had some kind of truth from me. But no, I, I think that... Um, <laughs> I'm pretty normal that way. <laughs> Actually, my spine is pretty hurt as well because I've done some abusive movements of my belly and my sh and my hips. That's why I refuse now to move. To do the hips. Yeah, to do well, the Well, okay, that's, that's a I'm good going, thing. You know, because this part is what I'm exploiting now. This is the Music Factory. 